Hello, I'm Ben Wattenberg. The Central Intelligence Agency is under heavy fire. A traitor at CIA headquarters betrayed spies in the field, sold secrets to the Soviets, and now it is charged that the agency knowingly gave tainted information to the president. Can the CIA be fixed or has it outlived its usefulness? Joining us to evaluate the intelligence community are Richard Pipes, Baird Professor of History at Harvard and former Director for East European and Soviet Affairs on the National Security Council during the Reagan administration, General William Odom, Director of the National Security Agency from 1985 to 1988, now at the Hudson Institute, Neil Lewis, correspondent for the New York Times and co-author of the recent book, Betrayal, the story of Aldrich James, an American spy, and Jeffrey Richelson, author of the recent book, A Century of Spies, Intelligence in the 20th Century. The topic before this house, can the CIA be fixed? This week on Think Tank. Moles murdered agents, compromised sources, Cold War cloak and dagger games, all played parts in the recent scandals that are rocking the Central Intelligence Agency. Despite unheralded successes, CIA flops have always grabbed headlines. From the disastrous attempt to overthrow Cuba's Fidel Castro at the Bay of Pigs in 1961 to its perceived failure to predict the collapse of the Soviet Union. In 1994, Aldridge Ames, the man in charge of Soviet counterintelligence for the CIA, was arrested as a Soviet spy. He passed on many sensitive documents to the Soviets and gave them the names of at least 10 CIA agents working for the United States who were subsequently killed. More recently, the CIA stands accused of passing on tainted reports from known double agents to Presidents Bush and Clinton. The current director of Central Intelligence, John Deutsch, has promised Congress that he will clean house. But I will say this, that we will do the rebuilding necessary, changing the practices, the attitudes, the performance of the Directorate of Operations, so that we once again have the most effective clandestine intelligence surface service in the world. And I am dedicated to making sure those changes take place. The latest scandals are causing some in Congress to ask whether spending $3.1 billion annually on the CIA is worth it. Gentlemen, uh, thank you for joining me. Let's go uh, around uh, the room, starting with you, General Odom, and then uh, up to Boston uh, for Dick Pipes. Uh, what is wrong with the CIA? Well, there's a bigger problem than the CIA. The intelligence community, it's formed well over a long period of time. But increasingly, like IBM, when it ran into business competition, or General Motors, or Chrysler, or Lockheed, when they got into real trouble, they needed restructuring. The intelligence community needs fundamental restructuring. What you're seeing at CIA is essentially symptomatic of these larger issues. So, some fairly major structural changes are long overdue. Uh, we will come back to that. Uh, Jeffrey Richardson, what's wrong with the CIA? Not as much as people would think. I think the uh, myth, there's been a myth that they failed to protect the Soviet collapse, which isn't true. Uh, and the real problem that's emerged with the CIA is really in the directorate of operations as, as opposed to the agency as a whole. And other than that, I, I would mention that I would disagree with General Odom, and I think that revolutionary change in the structure of the intelligence community would be a very bad idea. All right. Well, that's, that's, uh, that bodes well. Neil, Neil Lewis? I think the CIA's greatest problem now is that it's uh, lost the trust of policymakers. Current, some current policymakers and any uh, policymakers in the future uh, are, would be reluctant to rely on the agency. It also, uh, this happens at a time when uh, the kind of people who would be traditional allies of the CIA the most fervent allies, Republicans in Congress, are uh, much focused on budget cutting. And the CIA in this state is very vulnerable. Uh, Dick Pipes in, uh, in Boston. Well, I would say in the, in the first place, the CIA is too large. Uh, most successful intelligence uh, agencies in the past abroad, uh, and even in this country, have been composed of a small number of very bright people. Uh, the CIA is tremendously bureaucratized. 
and its recommendations uh, generally get terribly diluted. Uh, it's very difficult in the agency to come up with strong uh, recommendations because they go through a process which dilutes them and eventually ends up uh, hedging. The CIA uh, knew what was wrong with the, with the Soviet Union and it is not true that it did not expect it to collapse, but uh, uh, not exactly when it happened. But uh, the, the recommendations on, uh, on the subject were so diluted that in the end um, they got a black eye. Uh, General Odom, you mentioned uh, in your uh, original statement that, uh, of course, the CIA is not the whole intelligence community. Could, right. could you sketch in for us how the, the American intelligence system operates, how it's structured, but briefly if you could. Basically, there are three military service, four military service intelligences. In other words, the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. And that plays probably the biggest role in most of the... They have, each have their own intelligence Each have their own service. intelligence, but it's not essentially duplicative, except in some ways. Then there is the National uh, Security Agency, which has all of the signals communications intelligence. Uh, there that, that's is, what you headed. That's what I headed. As a lieutenant general. That's the largest agency, uh, mm -hmm. two or three times as large than the others. Then there is the Defense Intelligence Agency, which is largely an analytic element, although it runs some uh, activities such as the attache program abroad. And then there's the uh, INR, Intelligence and Research, State Department. State, right. And there are many other uh, analytic elements in some of the other departments. Then there's CIA. And CIA is essentially three things. An S&T directorate, what, what a clandestine mean? service, a science and technology directorate, an intelligent analytic directorate, and a clandestine service. The, uh, and, and the directorate of operations is this clandestine service? That's the clandestine that, that service. That Jeffrey was talking about. And what about, you're right? reading about in the newspaper and what the books have been about uh, are largely about the, uh, the clandestine service. So we're talking about a very, very small part. Could, can someone explain to us what this recent case was where the front page of the Washington Post had a big story about how beyond Aldridge Ames, there were uh, many people at the CIA who were, according to Walter Pincus' story, doing terrible and evil things by sending along tainted information to the president and to the secretary of defense. And down in paragraph 37, buried in, in that story, was a little sentence is that they thought the intelligence was good nonetheless, because I guess uh, turned agents sometimes will continue to provide good material. Yeah, so some of it was still good. Uh, you, you, you forced me on the defensive. Uh, New York Times also had a similar story about these revelations. But the old regime story as we knew it before was about uh, Ames selling out many of the double agents whom right. the United States had recruited. And this was a horrific thing. Right, this but right. he rationalized what he did by saying, to, to the great dismay of the intelligence community, he made some sense in part because he was a, he's a repulsive, repugnant man in his behavior. He said, well, I did this in part because what's become is this heavy bureaucratized rivalry, spy versus spy. The KGB and the CIA, they, they exist and sustain each other. That uh, we want to know who their spies are, they want to know who our spies are, but very little of it, very little of what goes on in this, he, he asserted, very little of this affects policy and affects what the policymakers do. The latest revelations give us kind of a quantum leap in, into a new dimension that maybe some of the effects of what happened with Alder James and the CIA did indeed affect policy. But I must say, even if that's so, we don't know how much it supposedly it's in the nature of that false information was passed along along with good information. Because after all, if you have a, a dangle, a, a, a false spy that the Soviets are trying to pass along false information, they will salt it with real information. And perhaps the counterintelligence people in Langley think they can distinguish what's real and what's not. But in essence, it was that information about weapon systems helped distort priorities for policymakers when they decided how to spend our money. The pipes? Well, I can comment on these latest uh, revelations, but I do want to stress uh, something that uh, Bill Odom alluded to that the spying and counter-spying uh, is, is really a very minor aspect uh, of the work of the intelligence community. Uh, ultimately, uh, the overwhelmingly, what the community does is analyze data, uh, the bulk of which is obtained from open sources. 
in, in many respects, what they do is what we do at universities. Um, and uh oh. Yeah, right. Well, I, I don't mean the, yeah. that we do deal with clandestine information, no, but no, when, I when I dealt with, you know, they occasionally I consulted the CIA, they would show me their reports on the political developments in Russia and so on. This was not very different from what we were doing here in the Russian Research Center. Um, that is really the bulk of the work, and for that, what you need, uh, I'm, I'm setting aside now the issue of, uh, of loyalty of people like Ames and so on, uh, you need uh, first-rate analysts. I don't think the CIA attracts first-rate analysts, and when it does, as I've said before, they tend to get lost in this uh, mass of, of personnel that m makes it impossible to come up with, with strong uh, statements okay. and judgments. D does everyone agree that the people involved in this so-called tainting scandal, unlike Aldridge James, who was clearly a traitor, uh, and, and as you have pointed out, a repugnant individual, that these people were doing what they thought was best for the country and the agency. They, th th this was an error of judgment. Th th these were not people uh, d doing e evil things. Most Is definitely. that established by everyone? Oh, I don't accept that. You do not an accept An error of that? judgment? Or, or, but I was going to say it's an error of culture, though. Y you mean you well, think I don't know what they thought about themselves, but uh, I think if I found people like that, I would fire them before the sun set. I mean, if we had that kind of for their uh, behavior, absolutely, but, but, or but integrity, either one, whichever one you want to call it. Imagine, but imagine they were not like they, they were not like Ames. Did, 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 no, they're, they're not. They're not traitors. Like, they're not, not getting money. They're nothing like that. Yeah, I mean, that's it, not it. Right? But okay. the issue is intelligence is warfare, and if you're going to lie up the chain of command, or you're going to deceive up the chain of command, you're objectively uh, in opposition to what we're trying to do, and the standards in that community ought to be those standards. They are in the military. If a ship captain runs his ship aground, he can't say, well, some sailor down there didn't pull the right switch, and therefore, you know, I really shouldn't be blamed for this. Or military commanders in Korea were relieved preemptively. Uh, if General Schwarzkopf had complained about something and he had been relieved in the desert instead of having a great victory, uh, you wouldn't have had these kinds of arguments for uh, how they were you know, mistreated or uh, misguided and therefore shouldn't be held accountable. So, so General, the, the, one of the underlying debates here is the former directors of Central Intelligence. How accountable are they? I, is that what you're saying? I, I, they and people under them. I, I don't have any problem with holding them accountable for that. And look, I want to make a well, point. I mean, what does that mean, holding them accountable? I mean, d well, d d d d did your agency, when you headed it as a three-star general, the National Security Agency, d did it not make mistakes? Sure. <coughs> And, and I was prepared to accept the responsibility for them. And, well, and I, I, is, uh, to me, that's part of a military culture. The problem and here the is, of course, of uh, deliberate lying that is passing on information which you know is tainted. I find this mind-boggling, yeah, if, I, it's tr if well, true. Let, 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 let's go away from this specific case to a broader case uh, about the, uh, the CIA and I guess about the intelligence community uh, generally that they failed, allegedly, that they failed to predict the fall of the Soviet Union. That's a red herring. Sir, why? The, the Soviet Union would still be alive if well if Gorbachev and a few of his friends didn't decide to tear it up. There's no way you can predict a person's free choice. If you could, it wouldn't be free choice, free will. That's right. Gorbachev so, so himself that, did but, not predict the fall of the Soviet But the Soviet structure, Union. you can go back and look, as Dick said earlier, in some of the things that are written, you can find pretty good arguments that it would go a particular way, but I was a participant in a lot of those discussions. I'll tell you right now, no matter what's written, if you went to a National Foreign Intelligence Board meeting and said, what do you mean when you say Gorbachev is going to succeed, you would be told, well, he's going to succeed. Succeed at making it a liberal empire? Uh, you just got nonsense kinds of answers. So there was a lot of confusion of the very kind that Dick was talking about that meant that some of these very poignant and clear insights on the part of individual analysts didn't make it through and did not become the consensus and, and conventional wisdom to policy makers. Uh, Dick Pipes, you were, you were trying to get in, I'm sorry. Well, I was saying that uh, in 1980s, late 1980s, if you ask Gorbachev, is the Soviet Union going to survive or not, he would have told you, yes, we will survive. Therefore, as Bill said, it's, it's simply impossible uh, to predict the actions of individuals. However, uh, I remember when I was in Washington in the National Security Council in 81, 82, we used to get a steady diet of uh, analyses from uh, the CIA, and they very heavily stressed the economic and the political crisis affecting the Soviet Union. And that was one of the reasons why President Reagan took such a tough stance.
Uh, yes. Jeffrey uh, Richardson, uh, you, you have written that also, basically in agreement with uh, yes. General Alderman Professor Yes, I think Pike. the CIA did even better than the intelligence community as a whole, did a very good job in warning policymakers of the situation that was developing in the Soviet Union, that Gorbachev was, was having an increasingly difficult time, that a hardline coup was a possibility, and they really laid it all out for any policymaker or aid to a policymaker to understand what might happen. And as General Odom said and, and, and Professor Pipe said, the idea that they should have five years in advance said that the Soviet Union is going to collapse at the end of 1991 because of a coup attempted in August of 1991 is a completely unreasonable standard. I, I, I want to test Neil Lewis's courage now. You have these three distinguished colleagues of yours all saying sure. the CIA r really did a pretty good job about well, the Soviet Union. And they make it sound like it was not really that much news to all of us. L let us remember that it was uh, the person who has put this on uh, center stage is Senator Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who has used the alleged failure of the intelligence community to predict the collapse of the Soviet Union as the first count in the indictment for his case that the CIA could probably be eliminated or do sharply. Uh, I wanted to say two things to that. First of all, that's only count A. There are other, other apparent failures of the CIA over but, recent but, but years. But this would be a Himalayan fact it if certainly in charge, would. It if certainly in would. fact I was going to so. tell you about a couple of other foothills. Well, sure, first, sure. Go ahead. But, Go ahead. Give us a couple. But the, the, you know, the Bush administration complained about the intelligence in the days before the Panama invasion. Uh, I believe it's known that the CIA predicted the Sandinistas would win the 1990 election in Nicaragua by a certain percentage. In fact, the other side won by the exact same percentage. It, it's part of an accretion. L listen, l let me move on and, and go uh, first to, uh, to Dick Pipes in, in Boston because I don't want to lose him on, on the satellite and move on to the question of uh, the future of, of the CIA. I have absolutely no hesitation to say we do need some kind of central intelligence agency, whether it's the CIA or some other body, I, I'm not prepared to say. But you need a, an organization in Washington that collates the information that comes in from all the different intelligence uh, groups to which Belodum referred. Um, it has now been uh, established that in 1941, uh, uh, we had enough information to predict a Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. But it was scattered through the various intelligence groups in Washington, and there was no one collating this information. And it is precisely to avoid another Pearl Harbor that the CIA was established. So we do need some kind of central organ, whether it is the CIA or not the CIA, is, is not really uh, important, but that you cannot do what some people suggest, that is to scatter uh, once again the intelligence uh, uh, community to various uh, departments uh, as had been the case in, but, but, uh, before but 1941. You would, you would make it uh, leaner and meaner, wouldn't you? Definitely much leaner and meaner, yes. It's much too vast. It has to be cut down severely. Mm -hmm. Uh, Neil Lewis, you, you seem, well, you and General Odom seem to be the anti-CIA uh, people well, here. Well, to some degree, and I wanted to reflect on a comment that Professor Pipes and General Odom said, both emphasized how the clandestine services of the CIA are a small part of the larger intelligence mm -hmm. community. Well, as the CIA has its future pondered in various quarters, the Directorate of Operations is, in fact, some of its members will tell you some of the, the heart of the agency or certainly the part that distinguishes the agency. Right. You, you, we heard General Odom list a vast array of intelligence gathering agencies in the government. What was unique about the CIA was that it ran clandestine operations, words, covert they operations. Had spies. They, had they had spies and they did things. They bribed governments. They recruited agents. They did these things. None of these other ones do that. Well, ex and except that our adversaries did it. Yeah, I'm talking I, I about mean, of, no, no, of, I, I of, of our own. This, right. okay. So therefore, the threat to the CIA now, as I mentioned before, is I don't think this president, I don't think his successor, whether it be in two years or six years, is going to be very eager to engage the CIA in covert operations. So I think this special character of the CIA is in danger of becoming extinct. And as Professor Pipe said, it requires, and as General Odom and I think Jeffrey as well, some genuine restructuring of what you're going to do about it. Because I think the part that's really threatened is the Directorate of Operations. You may say it's small, but it is the character that distinguishes the CIA so, so what, from what everything else. What you're saying is because there are no bad guy Soviets around, we no longer need spies? Is that, no, no that's, that, is that your argument? No, we, we might well, but I don't think any policymaker, any one in an administration is going to really turn to the CIA in the immediate future. Yeah. I think they have no 
stature anymore to do these kind of covert operations. Uh, Gen General Odom, I mean, sure. is, go ahead. Or, or well, I, I agree with, with uh, what, what you just said in, in many regards. Uh, let's take Dick Pipe's concern about central control so that it's not, not dispersed. Absolutely, Dick. And I think if you kept, we have to keep a director of central intelligence. I think we need a national intelligence council. And we may need a very small uh, subsidiary analytic effort to, to support it. But you don't need the big DDI that tries to do intelligence for now, everybody. Now, hold the DDI. <laughs> the big analytic effort. What does then DDI stand for? The direct Deputy Director for Intelligence. In other words, the analysis. Right. Now to the heart of the agency, the DDO, the clandestine the service. DDO is the? Deputy Director for Operations. He, the, he's, the in charge of spy. he's in charge of spy. Charge of spy. The, 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 clandestine, spy the spy master, right. The clandestine service is, I think, as he said, on the way to extinction. Let me ask you a question. If you were a potential agent who wanted to work for American intelligence abroad, given the public image of the CIA, would you dare risk your life by being recruited by it? You have a dynamic but, at but work I, I, here. Isn't there is that no way for this. A we definitely need a strong clandestine service. But we. This can, but you are saying service, that this culture this, this cannot clan, support it. This clandestine service, this particular clandestine service, has outlived its usefulness. If you want a clandestine service, you have to start over. I mean, there is a, no a, other. And just put a, no put a. Other, I mean, the no American government should continue to sponsor spying, but put a different label on it. Or put it elsewhere, you mean? Put it in another building. Put it put, in put Defense it another, Department? Put it in another building, in another box on the chart. You, there are many alternative ways to go about it. But, the, but you cannot repair the present activity. It, it's, it's just outlived its right. usefulness. Je Jeffrey there. Richardson, what do you think? Well, I'd be skeptical that you can't repair the present activity. I mean, I'd really like to know exactly how many people are involved in activities that General Odom would you know, fire them for. Before I said you should scrap all 5,000 or so people involved in the operation. You also have a network and, a, and an apparatus that has been set up over the years. And I don't know that you can simply scrap it and start, start all over. Uh, uh, Dick Pipes, do we still need spies? Oh, uh, well, I, I don't like to use the word spies. Well, I, human agents. intelligence. You, human, human intelligence? Human intelligence, critical. Human, right. It's absolutely critical yeah. because it is only through human intelligence that you can find out what people's intentions are, what people's mood is, what people's attitudes are. There's no way satellites will tell you that. G g give me an example of where you would want to spy today and for what purpose? Again, I don't say spy. I, I mean, I, 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 human intelligence, sorry. Well, uh, take China, for example. I think in order to find out where, where China is moving, where the next leadership is likely to come from, the only way you can get it is from people on the spot who uh, have the knowledge and who are willing to pass it on to us. And it's not necessarily spying. It's uh, uh, spying uh, is too narrow a word because a spy is somebody who works in disguise. There are people who provide you information who are bona fide people on the other side. And uh, a lot of information I got about Russia when I was traveling there, Soviet Union, in the uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s came from people who were not in any way agents. They were just well-informed people who passed you on information. See, I think Dick is making an extreme, Professor Pipes is making an extremely uh, valuable point. Human intelligence a lot of it, not formal from the intelligence community, does inform the decision process. What's interesting, if you've sat there and watched this process internally, is how little impact what CIA analysts have to say, uh, what little impact there is on the decision process. Because there's a vast amount of information, first-rate analysis available in the open press, in selected university publications, articles, etc., and people that you talk to that travel. Therefore. Uh, this is vital information, but the amount that's actually produced by the clandestine service for that is trivial. All right, uh, listen, we have to get out now. I want to give Richard Pipes in, in, uh, in Boston uh, the last short word, sir. Well, in some I would say that the CIA is not as bad as people think and not as good as it could be. So there is room for improvement, but it, in some form, a central intelligence gathering organization should be maintained. Okay, thank you Richard Pipes via satellite in Boston. Thank you William Odom, Neil Lewis, and Jeffrey Richelson. And thank you. Please send your comments and questions to New River Media 1150 17th Street Northwest, Washington DC 20036 
or we can be reached via email at thinktv at aol.com or on the World Wide Web at www.thinktank.com. For Think Tank, I'm Ben Wattenberg. This has been a production of BJW Incorporated in association with New River Media, which are solely responsible for its content.